Good morning, everyone, and thank you for inviting me to make a few opening remarks at this inaugural Dr. George Fulford Water Symposium. I come to you today from land long stewarded by Indigenous peoples. And indeed, the Anishinaabe people say that water is the lifeblood of Mother Earth. So let us take inspiration from their traditional knowledge. I'm particularly delighted that this important topic has brought together an international audience, emerging scholars from Canada and Jamaica, and from both Queen's and the University of the West Indies. Here in Ontario, the home of the Great Lakes, we understand the international and geopolitical implications of how a country manages such an important resource, both its quality and its quantity. For us, these Great Lakes are actually a living laboratory for environmental stewardship. Crucially, this is equally a multidisciplinary conference. I know that tomorrow you're going to hear from doctoral candidates in marine and environmental sciences, civic engineering, and botany and genomics. The context in which you're having these conversations is both local and global, and the focus is both narrow and broad. It may range from the specter of future conflicts over scarce supplies of water to alarm about the quality and safety of local drinking water and the degradation of freshwater ecosystems. And with globalization and liberalized trade, we come face to face with environmental consequences such as the presence of invasive or alien species in boundary waters and industrial style pollution associated with intensive agriculture. And there are less well-defined potential impacts of structural changes to the economy and changing patterns of urbanization and utility sector deregulation. Only by embracing water's interconnection with almost every essential category of human endeavor can solutions be formulated that will have a real impact on people's lives. Your openness to tackling such intractable problems of immense scale and complexity requires, no doubt, a degree of humility. And humility is a suitable virtue for this particular moment in time. Indeed, this COVID-19 pandemic has humbled all of us. And in the virus's character and implications, are revealing parallels to the subject that you're studying. For both water and the pandemic are natural forces of almost inconceivable size. They teach us much about science, to be sure, but they also expose something of the human condition. The underlying facts of poverty, gender inequality, and inequitable access to quality health care for instance, mean that both water in its absence and COVID-19 in its presence do not affect all members of society equally. And for those issues, we don't have a vaccine. The comparisons could go on, but on a more hopeful note, what I wish to underscore as you begin this conference is that the most comprehensive solutions for remedying both issues share important similarities. In equal measure, this pandemic and all the vast and diverse problems humans have created for our oceans and our waterways require the best of science, research, and technology. They require expansive new approaches and ways of critical thinking. And they also require the knowledge that comes from the social sciences as many solutions require changes in attitudes and behaviors of both individuals and of our institutions. This gathering gives me hope that answers will be found. Having visited the Queen's University Biological Station, I've seen and heard firsthand the excellence of this place's research. So I hope that you will continue to foster within yourselves 
the curiosity and desire to make a difference that undoubtedly led you here today. Your dedication and commitment are needed now as never before. And finally, I thank this meeting's namesake, Dr. George Fulford, for his vision and wisdom. And although I don't know him, I dare to suggest that he would also urge you to spare just a moment's thought beyond science and technology. Studying water speaks to the essential human need to connect with something bigger than ourselves. And so I leave you with the words of Canadian underwater explorer, doctor and author, Dr. Joe McGinnis. He said, the Great Lakes are not repeated anywhere. They are not comparable to anything. Perfect in their primordial place, they transcend our understanding of the world. Enjoy yourselves. I wish you all a most productive symposium. Merci, miigwech.